Hello, Precalculus folks. This is Mr. McAllen, and today we're going to talk about how we find a trig function if we're given a sinusoidal wave function plotted for us. So there's some real simple um, steps to this, and uh, this is actually easier to work with than if we worked with the equation and we were trying to generate the graph. So because we have some experience doing this in the past, as far as graphing a sine wave, we're going to use that to help us come up with the equation from um, the sine graph. So the first thing we do um, is we want to find the midline. So we're going to draw a midline through our sine wave, and I'm going to choose um, a blue color to go through, and I see my midline looks like it's around negative 2. So I'm going to write down y equals negative 2, just like we did before when we were plotting it. I'm going to write down over here my d value is negative 2. Once I know my midline, I can figure out what my amplitude is by looking at how high up it goes from the midline and how far down it goes from the midline, which should be the same value. So in this case, I can see that my amplitude is going to be equal to 1. So I'm going to write down my a value is 1. So I'm halfway finished. Now, because the problem specified to find the sine function, you have to pick a starting point for a sine wave. So remember a sine wave always started at the midline and went up and down and then came back to its ending point. So you are looking for what x value that starts at. And remember, we call that the starting point. So you're looking for the x value. And when I look at that, I'm going to change my graphing colors to uh, green. I see a starting point right here. And I'm going to just uh, estimate or say that it's exactly at negative pi. So I'm going to write down over here my starting point is equal to negative pi. Now I need to find out my ending point where one full cycle, uh, the function goes through one full cycle. So if I look at the sine wave and I am, you know, showing where it goes from start to finish, I see that my end point looks like it's at pi. So I'm going to write my x values end point is equal to pi. And this tells me what my period is, because remember, the period is the distance from the starting point to the ending point. So I could write out the period is equal to the end point minus the starting point. And that's going to be uh, pi minus negative pi. So I know my period is equal to 2 pi. So I'm going to write down here as my third piece of information, period equals 2 pi. And now I'm going to solve for my b value. Because remember, um, period is equal to 2 pi over b. Fill in what you know, solve for what you don't. So I'm going to put 2 pi over here for the period that I just found equals 2 pi divided by b value. Cross multiply and solve for b. And you'll see that b is equal to 1 in this case. So that was pretty easy. We had to find our starting point, our ending point, subtract the 2, get the period, and use that in our equation to find the b value. The last thing is to find the c value. So in order to find the c value, you need to remember that um, the starting point in this equation right here, b times the starting point plus c had to equal 0. So we know what the starting point was. We know what the b value is. So we just plug those values in, and we solve for the c value. So the b value was 1. The starting point was negative pi. The c value is unknown, but we're going to solve for that. And when we solve for that, we get c is equal to pi. So now we have all the ingredients to find out what our trig function uh, should be if we write it in the form of a sine of bx plus c plus d. So let's just finish that out. y equals, and the a value is going to be 1 times the sine, the b value was 1, x um, plus pi, uh, and then minus 2 for the midline. Try that out on Desmos. And you'll see that that gives you exactly that curve that we see in the picture. I hope this video has helped you understand how to graph the sine function. In the next video in the series, I'm going to show how we do the same exact work for if we're going to work with a cosine function. And this video is going to be a lot shorter because um, the, the same steps that we took to find A, B, C, and D are very similar to what we just did for sine. I look forward to hearing your comments in class. 
and please answer the questions on the associated form for credit for homework.